honestly feel like this isn't even real right now. Um, just, uh, it's really special. It's a special group of guys in the locker room, and uh, to come away with the win, I mean, really, that was my number one goal, is just to just give give the team anything that I had, which I didn't know how much it was, but just give them anything that I had to help uh, help us get the win. He was literally on his deathbed, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and, and mustered up enough to come in Wednesday and practice, and, you know, he was getting IVs, and fighting a virus and, and uh, you know, grittiest performance I've seen in a long, long time. And he was, uh, he, was out, he was outstanding. Love it. The Hasselbacks are good people. Last night, a very sick Matthew Hasselback led the Colts to their third straight win, defeating the division rival Texans by seven on the road in Houston. Stephen A., did you give up on your Super Bowl pick a little too early on those Colts? I don't think so. Um, I just look at this team right now. They're obviously, um, they've got talent on the squad. Um, I, I was pleased to see how Frank Gore is running the football. I think he's finding his groove. He's finding the rhythm. I thought the offensive line was making enough holes for him. That was good. It was, see, it was good to see Andre Johnson return to Houston and remind them that he still has a little bit left in him. There's no doubt about that. Matt Hasselbeck deserves a lot of credit. Um, I'm still at a loss as to why. Matt Hasselbeck, at 40 years of age, hospitalized for a day, receiving how many, Lord knows how many IVs uh, over the last few days uh, from that bacterial infection. And he spent practically the last three or four days on the toilet before he ended up coming out there to play uh, last night. I'm still flabbergasted to see how, you know, he was able to get rid of the football and be virtually untouched throughout the entire evening with two and three step drops getting rid of the football but somehow that's not something that the Indianapolis Colts could manage to incorporate whenever Andrew Luck is behind center seems a bit odd to me that that would happen uh, but I, I would tell you that the loss to me even though I give the Indianapolis Colts and particularly Matt Hasselbeck a whole bunch of credit because he really did do a good job and I know his brother Tim who works for this network is incredibly proud of him as well he should be uh, but I also look at the Houston Texans and I just find myself thinking that they're a mess. I think, Skip, that if I, I, I joke around and, and, and call the Dallas Cowboys an accident waiting to happen, I think on a serious level, that is exactly how you can describe the Houston Texans. What, what can go wrong will go wrong. I look at the Houston Texans, Skip Bayless, and I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. This kid, DeAndre Hopkins, is a stud put, put on a show last night. Arian Foster was upset he had to get taken out of the game because of concussion protocol. Uh, but, 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 and obviously Ryan Mallett went out of the game with that shot to the ribs. But Brian Hoyer comes in, passes for over 300 yards, 312 to be exact. But with two minutes remaining, made one of the stupidest plays one could ever imagine a quarterback making. Nobody is open. But because he sees pressure coming from his right at the last minute, he throws a Hail Mary. It's a third down, Skip. They still have a fourth down to go. It would have been like fourth and two. And he just throws the ball up there. Nobody open. And Mike Adams is sitting there waiting for it like it's a fair catch or a punt or something because Brian Hoyer had no idea where he was throwing the football. Uh, it is these kind of mistakes that make him the backup that he is. He is a reserve. He will always be re a reserve. But it is not because of his talent. He has the talent. It's because of the IQ that seemingly gets lost at key pivotal moments when it comes to him, combined with the fact that he's like a deer in headlights in certain big moments, not over the course of lengthy moments, but I'm talking about a particular, specific, minute moment in time that's very, very pivotal. You can't rely on this guy. He will mess up. That's what Brian Hoyer did, mm. and I think that, that that kind of mentality simply just drapes the Houston Texans franchise. It, it, it's got Bill O'Brien probably on, on depression medication for crying out loud. He, can't, he don't know what to do right now because of this guy. It's just a shame. It's Russian roulette at the quarterback position because nobody can step up in Houston. And I think that that is what is demoralizing this franchise more than anybody else because they know that no matter how hard they fight, somebody at the quarterback position is going to mess it up for them. And I think that kind of attitude has infected this franchise, and I think it, contributed, it contributes to losses similar to what took place last night. 
Okay, before I answer Molly's original question, quick thought on the earlier part of your soliloquy. For once, I thought your reporting and research was a little too detailed on the extent of Matt Hasselbeck's illness. I'll, I'll just leave that for, for the imagination. Now, <laughs> on to your, okay. your bigger picture point. <laughs> I'm gonna ask this half kiddingly, but only half kiddingly about your Super Bowl predicted Indianapolis Colts. And now I respect the fact you have backed off your prediction and you're not ready to remount the bandwagon. But I ask this half kiddingly, are you sure they haven't looked a little bit better with the backup quarterback instead of Andrew Luck in there? Because the backup quarterback, nearing 40 years of age, has turned the ball over zero times in his two starts, zero interceptions. Nothing last night on the road against a division rival, you know, in a place that they were, they were the underdogs last night, and they won their, what, record 16th straight division game. And yet, I like watching this team more when Andrew Luck isn't the turnover machine that he has been. Obviously, he's a supremely talented quarterback, and obviously, he is much more capable of creating explosive plays than Matt Hasselbeck is. But Stephen A., he is a turnover machine, and he has been for, for his entire duration of his career in the National Football League. He has not gotten any better. He has not cleaned up his act, Andrew Luck. So maybe it's been a good thing for him to stand on the sideline, pat everybody on the back as they come off the field, but to absorb the fact that the veteran quarterback is simply managing the game. And when it's time to make a big throw to kill the clock at the end of the game, as he did to T.Y. Hilton, you make one big throw that, that, that ice the game. But Matt Hasselbeck has been a master at avoiding turnovers, while Andrew Luck has been the master of creating fumbles or interceptions and turnovers. So again, I, I hope this is coming clear to your man, Andrew Luck. This is the way you, you have to win football games in the National Football League. Your thoughts? Well, I think your argument is asinine, but I think it's purposely so. So I'm not going to really engage you with it too much uh, because they beat Jacksonville and now they beat the Houston Texans. All of a sudden, Matt Hasselbeck, 40-year-old Matt Hasselbeck, is a better option than Andrew Luck. Really? I mean, I'm not going to dignify that with a, with, a, with a soliloquy or a diatribe. It's a waste of my time. The fact is everybody knows that Andrew Luck needs to stop turning over the football. Uh, this isn't three years over the last three years where he was sacked 100 times, getting popped an additional 71 times even after he got rid of the ball, putting himself on, or being under constant duress. The offensive line is a little bit better this year. The running game is a little bit better. You've got additional weapons at the wideout spot, so all Andrew Luck has to do is refrain from turning over the football and things will be fine. He's got to get away from trying to do too much. That's about it. But he's still Andrew Luck. And if you're sitting there and you expect me okay. to entertain you by getting into a debate about whether the Colts no, are I better don't. off with Matt Hasselbeck as opposed to Andrew Luck, you're wasting America's time. I'm not falling for it. No, it's just I'm another not. trick, an engagement <laughs> and trickery on your part, being no. the slick, <laughs> duplicitous no. dude that you are. Mm -hmm. I will not Sorry. get into it. It is a waste of my time. I am trying to enlighten and educate you as to how you have to operate at quarterback to be successful in the National Football League. I've been, try I've been trying year, to enlighten you about your Cowboys for years. You won't listen. You won't listen. So who are you to enlighten well, me about Andrew Luck? Andrew Luck played in a wild card game. He played in a divisional playoff game. The next year he played in the AFC championship game, whereas the Dallas Cowboys haven't even been back to a conference championship game in 20 years. You haven't well, listened to me when I tried to enlighten you. Why should I listen to you try to enlighten me? Because you're losing this battle. Let's deflect the blame off Andrew Luck onto Tony <laughs> Romo, who, by the way, has cleaned up his act the last two years, which is why they have been such a better football team. My point to you I is simply this. Last time I checked, Each time Tony Romo was on the sideline with a sling. Oh, thanks. That's a cheap shot, but I'll, I'll accept it. You, you deserve <laughs> it's it. It's the truth. Look, it just happens to be the truth. Here's the point about, okay, Andrew Luck has skated through this division year after year. This is the cakewalk division of the NFL. 
They just went and stole a game at Houston against a team that after hard knocks, a lot of people thought was going to be on the rise. Maybe right here. Maybe they've arrived this year. Baloney they have. This division is like in, in the Colts lap. They're going to win it again. They're going to get home playoff games. Who knows where they'll wind up if they get uh, they advance to the second, third round of the playoffs. But when they wound up at Foxborough, they got their doors blown off because their quarterback kept throwing it to the other team. You just can't. You, you can skate that far, and then when you play a real football team, you're going to lose. And Matt Hasselbeck showed you the blueprint last night. That's all I'm trying to say for getting rid of the ball quickly and accurately and carefully, making the plays that have to be made because he's behind the same Offensive line, I heard Steve Young on SportsCenter the other night say, Andrew Luck hasn't had a clean pocket in three years. Okay, great. Well, does that mean that Hasselbeck's been getting clean pockets against Jacksonville and at the Texans? I doubt it. He's just getting rid of the ball and being careful with it. So, so that's my point to you. Let, let me, okay, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to move quickly to the Texans because you commented on the Texans. Who picked those two quarterbacks? Who defended those two quarterbacks going into the season on Bill hard knocks? Thank you. Bill O'Brien did. Don't give me this. Well, what are these people talking about? We don't have a quarterback. We have two really good. No, you don't. Sorry, you don't. And you keep playing musical quarterbacks. You blame this one. You go to that one. Then you blame him and you go back to him. And I got to tell you, I'm going to stand by what I said during hard knocks. Bill O'Brien is getting obsessed with being on camera. He's getting incredibly camera conscious, and he was last night. He knows that after every turnover, the camera's going to come to him on the sideline. After every dumb play his team makes, the, the camera focuses on Bill O'Brien. And what does he do? Oh, my God. Huh. How can you do this, Brian Hoyer? He's Brian Hoyer. He turned back into Brian Hoyer right on schedule, as you pointed out, at the end of the game. But I got to tell you, in that locker room, a lot of those veteran players are going to start thinking to each other, hey, our coach is making us look terrible on television. Oh, how could you do this to me? It's not my fault. It's your fault. I'm going to tell you, Bill O'Brien is getting into hot water and he's about to be on a hot seat. All right, gentlemen. Well, listen, I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that because, you know, he had an opportunity to grab a quarterback. He passed on that, so you're right about that. The only last thing that I would have to say is that that little soliloquy you went on about Andrew Luck, you could have easily made the same argument over many, many times uh, about Brett Favre, who has 336 career interceptions, but you never did that because he's Brett Favre. He's one of your favorites. He's one of your pets, okay? I'm happy now, for now you, go to but Brett that did Favre. not go by me. We're going to change me. the conversation to Brett Favre I'm because just telling you're losing that I'm just, argument. I'm just telling you. I'm just argument? telling you how you are. You forget. You engage in selective amnesia far too often, and you need to stop. I'm here to bring you to the light. Okay, last quick question. Are you telling me that Andrew Luck is better than Brett Favre? No, but I am telling you no. that Andrew Luck, in my opinion, has the potential to be better than Brett Favre before his career is over. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, and I keep telling you, show me, don't tell me. Thank you. All right, well, if he plays...